2 Thessalonians 1, 7 and 8 is where I'll be at if you'd like to follow along in your Bibles. <clears throat> and to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus Christ shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in a flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. You don't hear too much of that being talked today, do you? Not, not on the mainstream about how Christ is coming back in a flaming fire. This isn't going to be a secret time. Yeah. Everybody's going to know what's going on. Yeah. For some, this is going to be a time that they're going to be invigorated. Blessing. A time of blessing. Yeah. A time of peace. A time of, in our scripture it says here, rest. They'll be able to rest because fighting's done. Our Lord has returned. Yeah. But that same time, this flaming fire that's going to be surrounding our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will engulf others. So today, there are many people who have a casual view about Christ. But you see in our text, there's nothing casual about His return. There's nothing, nobody's going to be sitting back with their feet up in the air, with their hands behind their head, and, oh, yeah, there's Jesus. That's not the way it's going to be viewed. When he comes back, everybody's going to straighten up. We'll be joyful, but it's going to be a very, very potent time for us to be alert. Everybody's going to be alert. It doesn't matter if you were alert before. It didn't matter if you said you're an unbeliever before. Everybody becomes believers at one time. For some, because we believed all along, this will be a good time. But others, this enlightenment by the flaming fire is not going to be a one of a joyful occasion. So now we are at peace. Today we have a time of peace. Today is a time to make advancement. We use our time of peace to advance in the Word of God, in, in the Lord, so that when the time comes, that trouble, you don't know when trouble's coming. Today we're at peace. Tomorrow we could be faced with death because we believe in Christ Jesus. We want to make this time the best time we can to make advancement, to be ready. I use an example of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they were at peace for a time, and then trouble came. How did they react? How did they react when trouble came? Yeah. Did they throw their hands in the air? No, they were ready for this time yeah. because they were focused on, their, on God the whole time. They weren't casual. They weren't half-hearted. We know because when the time came, when the test came, they were able to go through that test. Yeah, right. And yeah. the reason I thought about this with this scripture is because just like when Christ comes back with fire, that same fire for some, it's a fire that's going to save them, and others, it's going to destroy them. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were, thrown, they were being tossed into the fire. They really didn't know what was going to happen to them, but they knew who they believed in. Yes. Amen. They didn't have all the answers, but they knew who did have all the answers. Amen. They knew who to turn to for the answers, and they knew who to stay by. Now, while many got burned up into the furnace, they came out without smoke on them. When Christ returns, many are going to be destroyed, but those who believe and stay with the Lord Jesus Christ, they are going to be coming out without smoke. We're going to be, we're going to be white. We're going to be, give, we're going to be heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We're not going to be consumed. So it depends on what you've given yourself to. Have you given yourself to the world? 
Because that's going to be the part that's going to be consumed. Yeah. Amen. Have you given yourself to the Word, to the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior? Have, is this what you've been using your time for? Because when everything else is burned up, yeah. the times that you have prepared yourself to be with your God, that's what's going to matter when Jesus comes back. Mm. That's what's going to make a difference in how you spend your time. Mm. So how do we spend our time? Well, we spent, we're here today. We are looking to the, to the one who is, as 1 John 4, 4 says, greater is he that is in you than that is in the world. So we're giving ourselves to the one who is greater than the world. What can the world do to us but take our lives? And then we'll be with our God. If we look to the world for answers, we get none. But if we look to our God, the one and only true God, and our Lord Savior Jesus Christ, He has all the answers. And He's laid them out for us. But He's the only one that can give us wisdom to be able to dig this up. So even today, as we prepare for our Lord's Day, we look to our God who has the wisdom and it can give us, give us the understanding to be able to see Him, to be able to see Him clearly and to see past all the distractions, see past all the, the smoke and mirrors that Satan has put in our way. Mm -hmm. And we can see beyond that up to where we are heading. <clears throat> and we can be cleared up. Our minds can be cleared from everything that's going to pull us away from what the truth is. So that we can prepare when, when Jesus Christ comes back. Amen. Amen. So that when we are faced with death, we do not have to be troubled, as some are troubled, but we can have this confidence that we can only receive through Jesus Christ. We can be prepared for whatever comes our way. Since we don't know what's going to come our way, does anybody know the future? Does anybody know tomorrow? Is tomorrow going to be a peaceful day to, for you? Is tonight going to be a peaceful day? You don't know. But what we can know is to who will give us the peace that we need in the time of trouble. The grace that only can come from our God to prepare us for whatever we have. In our scripture here it says the rest. Nobody has rest outside of our God. You don't really have rest. You can pretend, but when it comes down to it, there is no rest without our God. We can know that our God is able. Mm -hmm. He is able and He can make you able. Mm -hmm. For whatever comes your way that you not be distracted. <laughs> not be distracted from the end goal. The goal is to be with our God. He is our reward. Mm -hmm. What greater reward will we have except for to be with our God? Mm -hmm. He can deliver us from a fiery furnace. Or like Stephen, he can give us the strength mm -hmm. to continue to preach the word yeah. mm -hmm. against conflict, against stoning, against eventual death in this world. But he had peace all the way up to the time that the heavens were opened up and he was able to see Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He had rest in a time of trial and conflict mm -hmm. because it was given to him it was given as uh, Mark 4 11 says because it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God but then that are without all these things are done in parables see without God you don't have a clue what's going on but the reason we have understanding is because we because of our God opening things up to us <coughs> Some do not love the Lord because they do not know Him. If you were to know God, what, who is more lovely than God? Amen. Who, is, who is more merciful? Who, who is given more than our God? Why do people turn away? Because they do not know our God. And nor do they want to. We have been gathered together this morning because we want to know God. We want to know more about him. We can't get enough of him. 
This is why the world neglects God, because they do not want Him. They do not know Him. And just as our scripture says here, that when Christ returns, He is going to come with vengeance to those who do not know Him. Because those who do not know Him did not have no desire to know Him. <laughs> vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Romans 12, 19. This is very sobering for those who are half-hearted and not serious about God. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Hebrews 10, 31. What's casual about that? God now is calling His people to separate from the world and to come and know Him. When Jesus is revealed with all his angels, it will be in a flaming fire. Not a, oh, here I am. If you're not ready, prepare yourself. No, that's not the way it's going to be. Taking vengeance on who? Those who do not know God. He's not taking vengeance on his people. Not those who prepared their hearts and minds for his return. There are false religions and who promote that God is he he loves everyone just the way they are. Then why did Jesus Christ die for them? Was that a waste of time? No. It was because he couldn't accept us the way we were. We have to be changed Amen. to be like him, to have we have to have God's righteousness to be in his presence. Amen. In the end, it it will be God who is right in all his ways and the men who have turned their back on God. They are the ones who will be wrong. There will be no debating this in the time when we are there. Eternal life is for those who embrace the truth now who are those who embrace the gospel of Jesus Christ. He that believeth on him is not condemned but he that believeth not is condemned already. Yeah. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God, John 3.18. So believing is the key yeah. Amen. to prepare our hearts and minds. In the end, all that, cannot, all that will not stand the test of the fire will be burned up. God's people will <laughs> still be standing without the smell of the smoke. So as we prepare this morning, brethren, let us remember that this is not a casual time for us. We take seriously the peace that we have now that God has given us to be able to know Him and to prepare for what is going to be coming ahead. There's, this is not a secret. He's opened this up to us. Jesus is coming back. And preparation is the key and to be ready to know Him. Let us pray as Brother Robert comes up and uh, gives us our class discussion this morning.